Recently, America's tech giants have come under fire for the role that they've played in helping Russian trolls spread divisive messages online. And it turns out that this problem is a lot worse than we first thought. For months, we've heard about Russian efforts to divide Americans and disrupt the 2016 election by flooding social media with provocative ads. Today, Congress released a sample. There's this ad. Hillary Clinton with horns pitted in a battle against Jesus Christ. Woke blacks, South United, and Back the Badge focused on divisive issues and targeted information to specific audiences. All right, this is really depressing, both for America and for Russian spies, because in the old days, espionage meant using exploding pens and poison-tipped umbrellas. You know, now they have to use the same tool as your divorced aunt. <laughs> but, but this is shocking news. No matter what your politics are, Think about it, with just $100,000, Russian ads targeted 11.4 million Americans. But what had a wider reach were the free Facebook groups that they set up, which reached 126 million Americans. That many people were exposed to these posts that Russia sent out. What's also shocking is just how much Russia knew about American politics. Right? They knew about state border patrols, uh, the wokeness debate, even about Texas's secession. That is way more than we know about their politics. Let's be honest. <laughs> like, I don't know about you, if I was trying to sneak into an online Russian political debate, I would be found out in a second. I'd be like, hey, comrade, don't we hate snow? <laughs> uh, we love snow. Uh... <laughs> so after all these revelations, Congress demanded answers from the tech giants, Google, Facebook, and Twitter. But uh, because no one in Congress knows how to use a computer, they had to bring the internet to them in person. <laughs> and right away, it became clear that social media companies missed some of the obvious signs of Russian meddling. You put billions of data points together all the time. Google has all knowledge that man has ever developed. <laughs> you can't put together rubles with a political ad and go like, hmm, those two data points spell out something bad. Senator, it's, it's a signal we should have been uh, alert to and, and in hindsight, uh, it's one we missed. Okay, okay, yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. I love that. I love that even in real life, Facebook conversations devolve into anger and frustration. <laughs> because look at Al Franken. He's doing a real-life facepalm emoji. <laughs> like, look at him. The only thing missing was some random person popping in with a racial slur, and that's only because Jeff Sessions isn't in the Senate anymore. <laughs> Senator Franken got nowhere with Facebook during this hearing. In fact, by the end of it, they wouldn't even agree to not take North Korea's money. If, if a political ad was paid for by a North Korean won, will you pledge not to put it on? The, the currency signal, I understand your point. It's a signal we should have, so we should have missed. You can't say no to that. The currency signal... You can't say no to that. It's very easy to... Please answer yes or no, sir. It's relatively easy for bad actors to switch currency. So it's, it's a signal, but it's not enough. We have well, to sweep more broadly. Why would anyone use the North Korean yuan? <laughs> why would a bad actor go like, I'm going to trick Facebook. I'm going to use the North Korean yuan. <laughs> I'm sorry. Al Franken is hilarious. This guy's so funny. He should go into comedy. Wow. <laughs> I, look, I do understand why he's so frustrated, though. Facebook loves money so much that they're not willing to put a limit on who they take it from. You know, any question, anything? So would you guys let Hitler buy ads on Facebook? Well, I mean, how else will he reach his fans in Charlottesville? I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Like, you would think that Facebook would be a little more discerning, given the financial shape that they're in. For instance, just last quarter, they had $10 billion in revenue. That's over $100 million a day. Do you understand how much money that is? You could eat sushi every day. <laughs> and now I know some people will be like, Trevor, what does it matter, right? Some Facebook groups sent out some memes, people are fighting online, that's what we all do anyway. Yeah, but you see, the difference is, these Russian accounts, they weren't just trolling. Right. They were working hard to mess with how people voted. I want to first uh, show you from Twitter a deliberate misleading of people that they can vote, in effect, online using this celebrity's image, Asis Ansari, 
who's well known to the group that's likely to believe it, prompted some people to think they voted. You see? Now, that fake picture is not just some viral meme. That's disgusting. Not only because some people would be fooled into thinking they can vote online, but more importantly, they impersonated Aziz Ansari, <laughs> which makes him look bad. And he must be so angry. Luckily, we have Aziz Ansari right now, live on the phone. Aziz Ansari, everybody, <laughs> joining us live. Uh, Aziz, what's going on, man? Hey, Trevor, man. Thanks so much for having me on the show, dude. Oh, anytime, Aziz. Uh, you, you must be furious at the Russians. I'm so mad, man. This is so crazy. All these people pretending to be me, man. I'm just trying to live my life and see this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> now I work with the Russians, dude. By the way, Trevor, can I just say, man, The Daily Show is the greatest show of all time, dude? Like, you totally should have been in The Lion King, man. Like, <laughs> you'd be in The Lion King, dude. You'd be the greatest person. All right, gotta go, man. Bye. <laughs> That was the real Aziz Ansari, everybody.